Hi, friends. Michelle here. This is the Showgirl Tip of the Day podcast. And today we're going to talk about negotiating. So one of the things I learned from someone that I knew that worked in the job recruiting business is that nothing is set in stone and everything can be negotiated. So we have in the Actors Union, there's several minimums that if you are in the union and you book a job, either SAG-AFTRA or Actors' Equity Association, there's minimums for a day's work or a contract, a weekly salary. However, these rates can always be negotiated. Same thing with directing, choreography, stage management, anything really, props, set design, lighting design, anything that you do, you are free to set your rate. And I, I think a lot of people don't even know that. So offers come in to me. What I do is I'm still at the point where I'm trading time for money. Hopefully soon I'll be able to scale some of my businesses and then I will be able to make money around the clock even while I'm sleeping. Wouldn't that be nice? But if someone offers you an amount of money to do a job, Here's what I like to think about. What is the project? Is it a project that is on your bucket list of things you're dying to do? Is it a career goal? Is it something that you feel really passionate about? Now, that shouldn't deter you from still making a living. However, you might be willing to trade a little bit in order to have that credit on your resume. That's the first thing. What is the project? Who are the people that you're working with? Who are the other people that are surrounding you? Are they people that you respect, maybe admire? Are they people in the industry who have other connections that maybe you can meet and work with? You really don't want to be the top dog on any project, you know? You want to be always able to meet new people and network and just create more possibility for yourself. The other thing is location. Are you traveling hours each day to work for a full day or a half day? What is the commute like? Are you really spending a lot more time getting there than doing the work? Are they providing housing? Is per diem included? So you can buy some food. There is one theater. I think it's the Forestburg Playhouse in New York. I have never worked there, but I believe they provide meals for everybody because they know that the schedule is really long and tight and they just make food for everybody so that that's one thing you don't have to worry about. And I think that's rather nice. So these are all the factors that you need to decide. Now, what about your own resume? Do you have some credits where you could maybe ask for a little bit more money? If you are a name, you know, and if you're a name, I don't know if you're listening to this podcast, maybe you are, and that's wonderful, welcome. But a name means that people recognize your name and it helps a project, it helps boost visibility. Perhaps your name will help sell tickets. One person that comes to mind at Algonquit Theaters in Algonquit, Maine, Sally Struthers, the television actress and the theater actress, she loves that place. And they often cast her in a lead during the season because she's an audience favorite and people will buy tickets because she's there. I think I've met her. I think I met her when she was doing Annie. That's right. Well, anyway... These are all of the things that you need to think about. Now, you don't want to negotiate yourself out of a job, but don't be afraid to very respectfully and politely ask for what you think you need to make to make it worthwhile. Don't forget, if you're a freelancer, you have to pay taxes. So some of that money is taxable and you're going to have to set aside 30% of your money. I talk, I say this as my accountant is like, really, Michelle? Like, you need to get yourself together. That's one thing I'm working on, everybody. I'm working on 
getting my tax situation neatly organized. My accountant said, you know, if you had QuickBooks, you could just do all of this yourself. And I was like, yes, but I pay you because I don't like numbers and boxes. Some people do. Some people are crazy about math. Some people are lovely about the numbers. To me, it's like all squiggly lines. I can't see those little tiny numbers, but I do like them in my bank account. So there you go. Negotiating. You could perhaps get some travel stipend. You could perhaps get some per diem. If you're in a cast house situation, perhaps you could negotiate your own room. When I was a dancer, one thing I used to do is negotiate leducas purchased for me that I could keep. Isn't that cool? And some theaters actually went for that and did that for me. Yeah, I was like, I'll dance better. My feet won't hurt. I won't roll my ankle. I will make a list. Go ahead and make yourself a list. What's important to you? What's important to you to do your job effectively? And you cannot be a diva and ask for green M&Ms in a bowl. We're not talking about that. But I'm just saying you don't have to accept the first offer that you're given. And if some people say to you, this offer is non-negotiable, it's firm, like I said, you can negotiate for things. If you're on a bus, you could negotiate to have your own seat. Or you could say, I, I have to sit in the front. You know, just little things like that could make a difference in your comfort. So that is my showgirl tip of the day, negotiation. Plus, one of the things I like to do is work with kind and nice people. And there was a job I recently did and... You know, I just had to make the decision not to return just because the management style was a little bit volatile and well-meaning, but really not con not in control. And I had to say, you know what? I don't need this in my life. I don't need to walk on eggshells. I don't need to have my stomach in knots to go to work. I love what I do, but it's not worth my health and sense of well-being. So there you have it. That is my showgirl tip of the day for this little section. Coming up, we're going to talk about the summer. Yeah, it's January. Yeah, it is. But it's time for you to start thinking about your summer and what you're going to do. Think about where you're going to go. And we'll talk about how to find those gigs. This podcast is supported by Showgirls Closet, my vintage business. I have an online store at Showgirls Closet on Instagram. If there's anything you ever see, DM me. I ship. And I have a booth at the vault, a once monthly vintage market in Winthrop, Maine. It is worth the trip. The vault is a multi-vendor market and it only opens for two days a month. It's an incredible event. We have so much fun there. Every vendor, just like myself, we are in our own small business. So shop small, shop sustainable, vintage clothing, showgirls closet. I wanted to also talk about when it's time to let something go. So one of the beauties about show business is that the industry is ever evolving and it is okay to pass on something. It is okay. Last year, I had an audition for a part that I just didn't want to play. So I was like, pass, and that's okay. Also, you might be negotiating like we just talked about earlier, and the other side is not willing to budge or not willing to give you what you want. And it's okay to walk away. It's okay to say, well, good luck with your project. And I wish you all the best. And maybe we will connect in a future moment, in a future season. Always be respectful. Always be kind. But don't settle for less than what you deserve. Don't work for substandard wages. This is why unions were created in the first place. Because there has to be a standard and there has to be a living wage. And there will always be somebody willing to work for nothing. I have a friend who is very comfortable financially and she'll take a job and it won't pay much, but that's because she can afford to do that. And not all of us are in that situation. And 
You know, if you're someone that doesn't need to work for money, you're just working because you want to or it's fun for you, well, that's good. But what you have to understand is that for most of us, how we pay our bills is from labor and a job. So sometimes my friend has a hard time grasping that, but that's how it is. My car will not drive if I don't put gas in it. And if I don't make my car payment, Subaru will take my car away. You know what I'm saying? And yes, I drive a Subaru. To me, it's the best car. It's so safe. They are expensive, but you know what? They don't break down. They're comfortable. They're gorgeous. There you go. Subaru, please sponsor the Showgirl Tip of the Day podcast. Also, letting things go. So I have a friend who reconnected with an old flame. They met by chance again and the sparks were still there. The love is still there. The only problem is he's in a relationship. And so my friend said to me, what should I do? And I said, you can still love this person in your heart, but let him go too. Let him go. He's in a relationship. You don't want to be hanging on, wishing and hoping. Love people let them go. Let them be who they are. And, you know, if this person said, hey, I'm free now, let's go to dinner. I'm free now. Let's take a walk. That's one thing. You, everyone, And this is just my take. The views on this podcast are strictly Michelle Bruckner's. Do what you want with your life, but always be mindful of how it affects others, how your behavior affects the people around you. That's all I'm saying. This podcast is brought to you with the help of Wrinkle Schminkles. Wrinklesschminkles.com. It's a cute little name, but they have great products. I've been using them and I definitely see results. Non-invasive silicone patches that you put on your face and it smooths out fine lines and wrinkles. They have plumping sheet masks. They have hydrolonic little microneedle under eye patches that I adore. Wrinkleschminkles.com and I have a code Michelle twenty Michelle with two L's twenty. If you use that code at checkout, you get twenty percent off. This podcast is also brought to you by Jackery. If you want a power source that can be renewed with solar energy, Jackery has all different sizes to fit your camping needs and to fit emergency prep needs. If you lose power. You need to plug something in. You need to recharge your phone. You want to run some appliances. Jackery has got you covered. Again, use my code, which I will link in the show notes below for 20% off. Yeah. So personal relationships, letting things go, letting people go. Also, in professional relationships, you always have to remember that it's a small business Everybody knows everybody and your name will come up in offices. Your name will come up when someone wants to recommend you for a job. So always keep your emails, keep your phone calls, keep all of your interactions polite personal and professional. What does that mean? Personal and professional. You don't it's not like that movie Wall Street with Michael Douglas when he was like greed is good and everyone was cutting each other and da da da. But what you want to do is you have your values, right? You don't want to go beyond your values, but you can be polite and kind. So if you're turning down an offer, you can always say, thank you so much for this wonderful offer. I must respectfully decline at this time. Maybe we can work together in a future season. So you never want to burn a bridge or close the gate. You always want to interact. And that brings me to my last point of the day of today's episode. You know what it's like if someone ghosts you. It's a big thing nowadays, especially sometimes people on dating apps will ghost you. They won't call you back or they won't message you back. The same thing happens in professional relationships And it is my biggest pet peeve. If you're talking to someone about working together, and let's say for some reason it's not going to work out, let the other party know. Don't just leave people hanging. Because oftentimes a job to a performer or a designer or a music director or a director, 
a job is the difference between paying their bills that month and not. So people often have overlapping schedules where two employers might want them for the same time. So please respond to emails within a timely matter. Don't ignore people. And if you are crazy busy, you could write them a message and say, I am in tech at the moment. I'm doing 12 hour days. I will get back to you in the morning or I will get back to you late this evening. Thank you for being patient. If someone is calling you on the phone, call them back and just say, this is a crazy time for me. I will respond to you. However, I'm in the weeds or whatever you need to say. But please do not leave people hanging. I find it most unprofessional. So not to be a big lecture girl today, but I just wanted to give you some tips to maybe help you navigate this audition season. Summer jobs. You can decide what region of the United States you want to work in. Or if you want to work in Europe, go ahead. You want to go to Tokyo Disneyland, go ahead, do that. Cruise ships. So summer stock is really what I'm talking about right now. Look up in every single state There are a bunch of theaters. Look them up. Everybody has a website now. Look them up. There are some people who have already compiled lists of these things, but they charge for this. So I understand that because they put in all the time and the effort into making these lists and they want to make some money. So if you want to, you know, go look up people on Instagram, there are several people who are now selling these theater lists and you know, they divide them up into categories. But like I said, in another episode, start where you are. So if you are in your hometown, is there a theater that's doing a summer show? If you want to go on the coast somewhere, look at all those coastal towns up and down the United States, East Coast, West Coast. I will say resort towns tend to have theaters. And I believe the people who opened Arizona Broadway Theater, I believe they did that because they knew so many retired people were in that particular area. And you want to have your audience be able to come see your show. You want people to be able to have discretionary income so they can buy a ticket to the show. Let me know what your favorite theater is. I'm going to do an episode, best theatrical experiences, best regional theaters. And like I said before, all of the opinions expressed are just mine. So take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt. And if you don't like anything that I've said in the last few episodes, nothing is legal advice. It's all just my opinion, in my opinion. So with that, I'm going to say good night, good evening, Have a great afternoon. Have a great morning whenever you're listening to the Showgirl Tip of the Day podcast. But I am going to ask you a favor. Could you please go to Apple Podcasts and give it a five-star review, say a few words about the podcast, and tell some friends. I really want to get this listenership up, and I thank you for your support. I will see you next week. The Showgirl Tip of the Day podcast has original music composed by Joshua Holloway. Find him on YouTube, Joshua Holloway Music. This podcast is written by Michelle Bruckner and edited by Michelle Bruckner and Joshua Holloway. Find me on Instagram, Showgirl Tip of Day. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again next week with a new episode. Show, show.